Welcome back to New Day Northwest. You know, sending our kids back to school is more than just new clothes and packed lunches. Each age group has health priorities that we need to think about. And here to help us is Dr. Elizabeth Mead, Medical Director of Education, Outreach, and Quality Pediatrics at Providence Swedish. It is so nice to talk to you, my friend. Great to see you. This is exciting stuff because there's a lot that goes into going back to school. It's fun, but it's also nerve wracking. And parents have a lot on their mind to go through right now. So let's talk about the different age groups and the different priorities, starting with kindergarten. Sure, so I think we classically think about kind of back to school shots right for mm -hmm. kindergartners and so there, there's lots of things that they need <laughs> boosters for um, so things like measles and mumps and rubella and whooping cough and all these things that we want our kids to be protected yeah. against so yeah. for that age group I think it is that kind of classic back to school shots but there are other groups of kids as well that we have to think about with vaccines that sometimes I think parents forget about okay I might be that parent because I was just thinking the other day I'm like kids nine like what do we need should I check in what about four to six year olds for vaccines? For vaccines. Or just in general? Just in general. Yeah, so I think, you know, we talked a little bit about the vaccines for back to school, but these are kids who are often going to school for the first time, and mm -hmm. certainly this year in-person school looks a lot different than it has in, yeah. you know, pre-pandemic. -pre so I think for parents of that age, it's really important to think about familiarizing your child with the school before you go as much as possible. So that could look like practicing the drive or the walk or the bus route, you know, however your child is going to oh, get to smart. school, playing on the playground if they're allowed to do that in the yeah. summertime, and then thinking about are there any other kids or families you know who go to that school who could give a little bit of insight or talk to your child about what it's going to be like so they feel like they have a buddy there? That's a really, really, really great idea. Okay, before we move on to preteens, I just have to ask as myself, so like at nine years old, are there any shots that they need to get? Probably not. Okay. 10 to 11 is typically the next group. Okay. Um, although COVID and flu are something we think about for every year. Every year, yeah. absolutely. Okay, now let's move on to preteens. What do we need to be thinking sure. about? Sure. So that kind of 10 to 11 age group, so often those are kids who are starting to think about middle school or going into middle school, there are some boosters that those kids need as well. So these are things like a meningitis vaccine, an yes. HPV vaccine, and then typically a tetanus booster also. And then this is the age where I think it's really important to start talking with kids about things they might hear about, learn about at school that they potentially haven't been exposed mm -hmm. to before. You know, our kids always know more than we think they do. So yeah. I think starting those conversations even earlier is great, but definitely if you haven't had the kind of sex, drugs, and rock and roll conversation by now, this is a great age to think about starting that. And Dr. Mead has always been the one to say you want them to hear it from you for sure first not from their friends somewhere. and I think yes. if you can kind of nip that in the bud and just make sure that you can have open honest conversations about it that are respectful and fact-based that's yes. super important so key all right the kids have faced you mentioned the pandemic a lot of disruption in their lives a lot of anxiety what have you heard from families and, and kids I mean, I know firsthand, I think both of us do, you know, mm -hmm. having kids at home in this time has been yeah. incredibly challenging. Yeah. I think continuing to work this time has been incredibly challenging. And there are lots of parents who have left the workforce or who are now staying at home with their kids. And that mm -hmm. can be really hard too. So I think it's just been really difficult for everyone. You know, we often think in that young age group, like, well, those kids actually don't know any different. So maybe it's a little bit easier on them. Yeah. But I think we have to recognize too, their worlds are really small and yeah. they have been for the past couple of years. And so when we think about development for those children, you know, getting them back into activities in school with other kids their own age and older kids and younger kids and kind of all the things they can learn from each other is great and really yeah. important and doing everything we can to keep our kids in person in school this year is going to be huge fingers crossed fingers crossed I have a couple of friends who are sending their kids off to kindergarten for the first time Do you have any advice maybe for those parents yeah. It's hard. I mean, first of all, it's very exciting, right? Yeah. I think it's a really complicated mix of emotions. So it's excitement, it's hope, it's fear, it's anxiety. It's just a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. about what that could look like. I mean, yeah. we have a, I have a stepson who's going into third grade and we've oh, never, yeah. second grade, excuse me, and we've never been into his school because parents haven't been oh, allowed in there. Right. So I think there's this whole other layer with COVID of like not knowing the environment in which your child is going to be cared for and kind of learning, right? Yeah. So talking to teachers, talking to school, finding out as much as you can, asking the questions that you want to ask but also just giving ourselves some grace to recognize yes. this is going to be complicated and it's okay to not feel a certain way about your child going to school i okay i love that giving that grace especially because you know we talked about this earlier on the show a friend of ours i'm um, one of our producers her daughter's going into middle school for the first time yeah. and, and there's got to be a lot of anxiety about all these new things any thoughts on how to handle anxiety sure i mean i think this is true for kids of all ages right we are mm -hmm. seeing anxiety really skyrocket in all the different age groups and i think especially for children who are going to a new school so switching to middle school or switching to high school or even kids going to college mm -hmm. um are having a lot of issues with this. So I think, you know, 
it's really important to recognize a lot of this is very normal and adjustment periods are very normal. Yeah. And so having those open conversations with your children, really at that age, we're talking about middle school and kind of beyond, yeah. they can talk about a lot more than we think they can. So they yeah. really can have nuanced conversations about their emotions. And I think sharing with your kids your feelings as well. Like, I'm kind of nervous about this too. You know, yeah. let's talk about what we're nervous about, how we can make that better, mm -hmm. and how we're going to talk to each other if we feel like it's getting a little bit hard to handle. Yeah. So just recognizing that anxiety is very normal with transitions. There may be kind of an adjustment period. But if you feel like your child's anxiety is bigger than you think it ought to be, if that adjustment period is not really evening out, it's not kind of settling out in the way that you think it might, yeah. or it's really affecting their everyday life, absolutely talk to their primary care provider. Okay, talk to the primary care. For sure. And I okay. think earlier than later, okay. just so we can ensure that we're really doing a deep dive to see if there's anything that should be taken care of. Really quickly before yeah. I let you go, do you have these conversations in front of the child or separately? I think both. So okay. I think it depends on the situation. All I right. think, you know, definitely being open with our kids about medical and mental health stuff is really important. Right. So I think telling your child, hey, I want to talk to the doctor about this. How do you feel about that? Getting some permission from them because it's them that you're talking about, right? Yeah. But also know that you can always have a conversation with your child's doctor oh, on the okay. side if you're very concerned. If you're about nervous. Something. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. As always, yeah. I could talk to you all all day about this, a whole show with Dr. Elizabeth Mead. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. All right, so for more advice for back to school anxieties, check out the blog on our website, on your on the website on your screen right there, blog.swedish.org. And if you've been putting off care or need to follow up, be sure to reach out to Swedish Primary Care today. All right, coming up next, you may have seen the news about delays in construction of several light rail projects in the Puget Sound area. But up next, we're taking a more nuanced look at what's going on with these projects. So stay with us. This portion of New Day Northwest is sponsored by Providence Swedish.